Hello, my name is Irenia White, and for the past month we have been exploring the beautiful country of Croatia. After being served this amazing cheese at nearly every restaurant we visited, we were extremely curious to see where it came from and who were the masterful minds and hands behind this incredible cheese. So today, our adventure continues on the rocky island of Pog, located in the northern Adriatic Sea, where we are going to learn how my new favorite sheep's milk cheese is made. The cheese we will be exploring today is called Paschki Sur. This cheese is unique to the island of Pog, and we will be learning the history and walking through all the stages of production with our friend Martina, whose family has been making this cheese for generations. We start our day at the dairy, where we have to wear disposable jackets, hairnets, and shoe covers to make sure everything is sanitary. Stepping into the building, you're surrounded by family photos, and every passing employee greets you with a big smile. You can tell this is a family-run business. Everyone is so warm and inviting. Martina shows us photos of her father, who was the man in charge until a few years ago when he sadly passed away. The first step in the cheese making process, besides milking the sheep, is the process of pasteurization. This is when the milk is heated to 149 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 40 minutes. Pasteurization helps ensure a safe milk supply, cutting down on harmful bacteria, unwanted growth, and sanitizes the milk before the production begins. We then headed to the room where the magic happens. As they prepared the tanks for the next step in production of Pashki Sur, Martina told us about her family and the work they have done for over 75 years. Throughout this time, they have worked with the same family shepherds, growing an incredible bond that is so apparent in their product. You can see how much they all love what they do. The next step in the cheese making process is for the milk to go through a second heating where the milk is combined with lactic acid and later rennet. This will start to separate the curds from the whey and form the first resemblance of cheese. You can see the curds start to take shape as the skilled workers use their hands to mix the milk and rennet. They then use a machine to slowly sift out the water and whey from the curds. These machines are specially designed to mimic the gentle movements of human hands, so the product is the same quality as it has been for over 75 years. Now that the curds have formed, they cover the tanks with beams and use a mechanical press to squeeze out as much of the moisture as possible. There are only about four people working on the actual cheese production at a time, and as you can see, they never stop moving. They are focused, determined, and incredibly skilled. Each day of production, these marvelous cheesemongers turn out about 270 wheels of cheese. Now they will prepare the molds to make the beautifully round Pashki Sur. Large squares are cut out of the curd and this is loosely pressed into the molds by hand before being stacked and hard pressed by machine. The cheese will rest here, draining the rest of the liquid before being flipped by hand, laying down the PDO stamp, and placing the molds to be pressed again on the other side. The 
PDO stamp is an awarded honor and means the cheese and milk are coming from a designated location of top quality. The wheels will rest here for about one to one and a half hours. After the cheese is rested, the stamp is removed and the edges are trimmed to make a perfectly round wheel. But don't worry, these tasty little scraps are saved and distributed like string cheese. This is one of my favorite things about Martina's operation. Hardly anything is wasted. The whey that was filtered from the curds earlier? That makes a whole other cheese called scuta that is similar to ricotta and is delicious in desserts and savory pastries as well. After being removed from their molds, the cheeses are loaded onto a large crate and taken to a salt water bath where they develop a slight rind. Martina referred to this as the cheeses taking a swim in the sea. After two days in the water bath, the cheeses will be moved to the cheese aging room. Unfortunately, we were not able to see the cheese aging room due to COVID, but I will insert some photos from Martina. The wheels are kept in the cheese aging room where they are rotated daily for an even rind until they are perfectly mature. If you're ever in Pog, you have to stop by the little cheese market right outside of the production facility. Here you can buy small gifts or whole wheels of their beautiful cheeses. Now our day is not over. It's time to meet the most important part of the production, the sheep. We travel to another part of the rocky island of Pog, where one of their huge flocks of sheep are kept. These sheep are the only livestock that can survive in Pog. This island has hardly any trees or grass. Only small shrubs and herbs grow on its rocky surface, but lucky for us, this adds to the flavor of the cheese. The sheep mostly graze on wild sage, and the salt that is blown from the salt flats on the sea covers the rocks, adding a beautiful brininess and herbed flavor to their milk, and therefore adds these beautiful flavors to the Pashki Sur. As you can tell, they were a little intimidated by strangers watching them. These sheep are very well taken care of, and as someone who is an animal activist, I was relieved and delighted to learn that these sheep are never handled by machines in any part of the process. They are sheared and milked by hand, and have offspring in a natural way, while also having a good amount of time to feed their babies before the milk is used for cheese production. There's vast amounts of land that they get to graze and run, and you can tell how much they are cared for by their shepherds. beautiful and simple cheese like Pashki Seer, when I'm making a board, I like to let it just be the hero of the plate, you know, stand out on its own. I don't really like to pair it with other cheeses just so it's not overpowered and you can taste those really simplistic and wonderful notes that come through as you're eating it because it is really all about the levels in this cheese that make it so special. So I've simply paired it with a fig and orange spread from Dalmatia in uh, Croatia as well, so same origin, which is great. And that's gonna, that citrus is really gonna uplift the nutty flavor of the cheese. I also have a little bit more citrus. I have some apricots, which will play really nicely with that as well. And then just some simple soprasada salami. You can do whatever salami you like the best, just I wouldn't do one that's herbed um, or has fennel or those kinds of flavors, something a little bit more mild will really play up this cheese. And I also paired it with a simple glass of rosé. You know, can't go wrong with rosé, especially with a sheep's milk cheese. I think that that's the perfect pairing. So yeah, that's my simple Pashki Seer cheese board. It's the perfect way to enjoy it in the United States. If you can get your hands on this cheese, I highly recommend it. I hope you enjoyed this video, learning all about how this beautiful cheese is made and meeting the family behind this beautiful product. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to like and comment on this video and please subscribe. I post new videos every week. We have a lot of travel vlogs coming from all over Europe. 
I have some more cooking episodes coming for the summer and just a lot of really fun things planned for this year overall. So make sure to subscribe, join my big family, and I'm just so happy to be watching it grow and share with you guys. It has been just the highlight of my year. So I'm so glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed it. I will also have more summer recipes linked below. They'll be on my blog, Feasting Season. And I also have some travel guides on there for the individual cities that I visited on this long trip. So definitely check that out. I'll have a link to my Instagram for more daily inspiration and a link to my Patreon account. If you wouldn't mind supporting me on there, if you have anything to give, it all helps. You're helping me achieve my dream and I just appreciate you all so much to my current Patreons. Your angels, I love you. You've just made a world of a difference in my life and I couldn't be more thankful. I'm excited to see how everything grows and changes this year and just keep on sharing with you. So thanks for joining me in Pod Croatia. I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you get the chance to try Pashki Sir in the near future. I know you'll love it just as much as I do. An extra special thanks to Martina and her whole team for opening up their production and sharing a little bit of your life with us. We can't wait to visit the beautiful island of Pog again soon.